When the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare came out, I played so much multiplayer online that my girlfriend wanted to literally murder me because she thought I was going to fail the Louisiana bar exam that I was supposed to be studying for instead. However, not only did I rack up a pretty bitch and kill to death ratio, but I passed the Louisiana bar and I married my girlfriend. So in my opinion, it was time well spent. Modern Warfare was the first Call of Duty game I ever played because as many TFB TV viewers know already, I don't get too excited about old guns. I had no desire whatsoever to play the older Call of Duty games featuring guns from World War II. The Modern Warfare series brought real guns used by present day operators to gamers everywhere. And in my personal opinion, it opened up the world of today's firearms to people who may have never even shot a real gun before in their lives. And for that, the Modern Warfare series is momentous for both video games and gun hobbies. Anything bringing people into the gun community is okay with TFB TV. There may be a lot of gamers watching this video and there's a good chance that some of you may have never even picked up a gun before. So we wanted to make this video for you to talk about a few of the real versions of guns from the brand new Modern Warfare game that dropped in October 2019. In this video we're going to talk about what we think are the five best real life guns from Modern Warfare and we're going to tell you about how the real guns compared to their in-game counterparts. Let's do it. Number five, the HNK MP5. I didn't want the MP5 to make this list. Designed in the 60s, the gun's over 50 years old, and it's, in my opinion, obsolete compared to new 9mm submachine guns like the SIG MPX or the B&T APC series of guns, which have more modern controls, design, and construction. While newer SMGs have CNC machined alloy components and receivers, believe it or not, the MP5's receiver is made in a similar fashion to the humble AK-47. It's just bent sheet metal. Seriously. This is my personal MP5, and in my opinion, it's soft shooting, accurate, and well built. There's no denying the legacy of the MP5. It's a 9mm submachine gun made in Germany by HK, renowned as one of the most durable, reliable, and trustworthy submachine guns on the planet. And the MP5 has been straight up dropping dong on terrorists since 1964. And although the MP5 shoots the same round and has about the same barrel length as the Uzi, these two guns are worlds apart. It's a little bit like comparing a dune buggy to a G-Wagon. The Uzi's great because it's simple. It relies on a straight blowback system to function. You fire the gun, the energy pushes the bolt backwards, and then a spring pushes the bolt forward to complete the action cycle. That's that's it. The MP5 uses a more sophisticated roller delayed blowback system where rolling cams on the side of the bolt mechanically slow down the bolt's rearward travel, allowing for a much smaller and lighter bolt. Some would say that this means the MP5 has less felt recoil than the Uzi. The MP5 also has a fluted chamber that allows gases to enter small channels in the chamber after the gun fires. These channels direct the gases along the spent shell casing when the gun shoots, which helps the casing get out of the chamber, reducing the chance of the gun jamming. I've even done a video for TFB TV in the past shooting the MP5 without an extractor, and it will extract empty shell casings even when missing an extractor, albeit unreliably. The MP5 was way ahead of its peers with the silencer mounting system it uses as well. It uses three lugs at the muzzle end of the barrel that allow for quick attaching and detaching of a silencer without screwing onto the gun. You just press the silencer in place, make a quick quarter twist, boom, it's on there. The barrel is fixed and free floating, meaning that it's more or less permanently attached to the receiver only. It isn't attached to anything else on the gun that could affect the accuracy of the barrel negatively. The barrel's also cold hammer forged steel, meaning that it's as durable as it comes. Legend has it that there are MP5s out there with over 100,000 rounds through them that are still shooting to spec. You also can't sleep on the outstanding diopter sights on the MP5 series either. These sights are often referred to as the best iron sights in the world. The user looks through a circle on the rear sight drum and aligns that circle with the circular hood front sight. This circle within a circle method is regarded as one of the fastest ways to align your sights in the event you aren't using an optic like a red dot. It's for these reasons among many others that the MP5 is still one of the most respected guns in the world and still used by operators from countless countries. The MP5 in Modern Warfare is relatively faithful to its real-life counterpart. Let's compare it to its closest peer in the game, the Uzi. 
In real life, both guns are similarly performing 9mm submachine guns. However, the modern warfare stats slightly favor the MP5 in every category. This isn't quite accurate, but it's also not too far off. Both of the guns fire 9mm, but the Uzi barrel is 10.2 inches long, while the MP5 barrel is 8.9 inches long. This means that the Uzi should be slightly more powerful than the MP5 since the Uzi will be pushing 9mm out just a little bit faster because of that extra inch of barrel that gives the bullet more time to accelerate. It will also give the Uzi an insignificant amount of extra range over the MP5. The Uzi has only a slightly lower rate of fire than the MP5 in game, but in actuality, the 600 round per minute Uzi does it is just 75% of the cycle speed of the 800 round per minute MP5. Both are about equally mobile and controllable, being very compact and easy to handle in real life, full auto fire or semi auto. Although I might say in my experience that the slower cycling Uzi tends to fire at a rate that makes it easier to control than the MP5. The video game version of the MP5 gets its most significant leg up on the Uzi when you look at accuracy, and this I agree with. Between the precision made free floating cold hammer forged barrel and the excellent diopter sights from the mp5 the mp5 should generally be a more accurate gun than the loosely constructed uzi so the mp5 is a little boring and a little bit unoriginal to have on this list but there's a reason why everybody knows what the mp5 is there's a reason why it's in every movie every video game and every list ever it's been the king submachine gun for over half a century moving on to number four we have what is on a personal level one of my most favorite guns. I know it drives you guys crazy when I say most favorite, but I have a lot of favorites. The Steyr AUG. The AUG was famously used by Carl in Die Hard way ahead of its time when it was introduced in 1977. The AUG uses space-age polymers to make the gun lightweight while combining modern manufacturing techniques. It's got the accuracy of the M16 that came out in the prior decade, but with the reliability of the AK-47. That's because, like the AK-47, the AUG uses a piston operating system, meaning that all of the gases are redirected from the barrel into a tube that holds a piston, and that piston's rod will push the bolt backwards. That's a little bit of an oversimplification, but that's the gist. It basically keeps hot gas and carbon fouling out of the gun's major operating components. Compare that to the M16, which uses a gas tube to redirect gases directly onto the bolt gas key to unlock the bolt and move it backwards. This introduces fouling and heat directly into the chamber and onto the bolt components. In fact, many people blame the dirtier direct impingement gas system used by the M16 for the rifle's early unreliability issues. Although the evidence suggests that bad ammunition was the cause of these early reliability issues, the M16 has never fully recovered from its reputation for being a dirty operating system. On the other hand, the AUG's short stroke piston system relegates much of the heat and the contaminants from the firing sequence in the gas piston tube, which is, in essence, a self-cleaning system. Piston operating systems such as those used by the AUG and the AK-47 get a rap for bad accuracy because movement of the piston will cause the barrel to wobble and flex. Watch any video of an AK-47 firing in slow motion and you'll see the gun flex like a guitar string when it's fired. This is no doubt why even the most sophisticated AKs are not exactly precision rifles. On the other hand, the AUG has a rigid cast receiver, unlike the thin sheet metal receiver on the AK. And unlike the AK, the AUG's barrel isn't affixed to the gas tube. In fact, the barrel can be removed in seconds from the AUG, while the AK needs a skilled gunsmith to change the barrel. Third, the AUG uses a short stroke piston system, which is slightly more complicated than the AK's long stroke piston system. However, the short stroke piston has less of a detrimental effect on accuracy. Long stroke piston systems are typically large, heavy, and attached directly to the bolt carrier group, which means that there's a lot of metal moving around whenever you fire the gun. Have a look at the long stroke piston system on this AK-47 bolt carrier group, but to stay on point, the AUG is a gun that manages M16 level accuracy, as my Steyr AUG A3 can put up 2 inch groups at 100 yards with service grade ammo. The AUG is also the only bullpup on this list. To oversimplify, a bullpup
up design is a gun that has the chamber and the magazine behind the trigger. The upside of this design means that you can have a gun like the Steyr AUG, which will have a 16 to 20 inch barrel, but only be the size of the HK MP5 with its 9 inch barrel. Downside of this design means that you're going to have to dedicate a few extra precious seconds to reloading the gun, and if you ever have to switch hands and shoot with your support hand, there's a good chance you're going to get a brass bukkake in the face because that chamber is going to be right next to your cheek whenever you fire. That said, the AUG's one of the best service rifles out there. It's accurate with excellent construction, and it has an outstanding operating system that protects the gun from internal contaminants such as foul from combustion, but also protects it from external contaminants like dust. The AUG is a proven service rifle that is effective at long ranges, and that is why it pisses me right off in modern warfare. In the game, the AUG is a submachine gun chambered in 9mm. While it's of course possible to convert a Steyr AUG to 9mm in real life, it's rarely ever done. If anything, it's more of a novelty. While there's an upgrade in the game that allows you to shoot 223 through the AUG, making the gun 9mm by default is unholy and indecent. It's a little like having the Ford Mustang in Gran Turismo, but using a four-cylinder EcoBoost engine as the standard configuration. The AUG is meant to get dirty and drop bombs at 700 meters if it has to. An AUG with an 18-inch barrel will send a 55-grain, 223 round screaming at 3,000 feet per second, and that round will still be cooking after it passes 500 meters. On the other hand, a 9mm out of the same barrel length will top out at around 13 or 1,400 feet per second, and will make it out to 200 meters max after it stops to catch its breath. In case you can't tell, I love this gun deeply, but I am super disappointed that they decided to make the schoolboy bitch configuration the standard setup in the game. For number three, I'm going to come down a little bit talking about, yet again, one of my most favorite guns, which they call the M4 in the game, but it's not really an M4. It's a Mark 8. I'm usually not a stickler for terminology, but in this case, it bears mentioning. AR-15, M16, M4, and similar terminology is often used interchangeably, and that's fine. While it's technically inaccurate, if you're having a conversation with a gun guy and you say M16 when you mean M4, vice versa, you usually know that you're talking about the same thing. But the reason why I want to interject here is because the M4 is somewhat of a standard, quasi-boring configuration of the AR-15 or the M16 platform. It's usually just a plain infantry rifle with plain furniture and a 14 and a half inch barrel configuration, maybe with an optic. It is the plain Jane infantry rifle of the U.S. military. On the other hand, the Mark 18 is perhaps one of the most badass configurations that the AR-15 or M16 can come in. It's truly unfortunate that the M16's creator, Eugene Stoner, died only two years before the Mark 18 configuration was born, but I'm sure that he chokeslammed Mikhail Kalashnikov in Gunmaker Heaven when he looked down and saw the most gnarly permutation of his design in the hands of a bearded, door-kicking Navy SEAL. The Mark 18 has a convoluted history that I discuss in greater detail in a video I did about the Mark 18 specifically for TFB-TV. But to give it to you in broad strokes, in the late 1990s, the Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division, aka the Twisted Dark Laboratory for the Navy SEALs, decided that they needed a gun that would excel at urban house-to-house -house warfare. Basically, a gun that's compact like a sub machine gun, but would perform better than the inventory of H&K MP5s in terms of ballistic performance and long-range shooting. Essentially, this involved modifying the M16 from a 20-inch barrel down to a 10.3-inch barrel and making several modifications that allowed the gun to function reliably and use all of the inventory of SOP mod accessories. The gun in the game is configured almost exactly like a present-day Mark 18 Mod 1 with a Daniel Defense RIS handguard, Knight's Armament Sights, and the Crane Stock with Waterproof Battery Compartments. This is much more exciting than the standard M4. In essence, calling the Mark 18 an M4 is a little bit like saying you're having sparkling wine when you're drinking Dom Perignon. It's technically incorrect, and why wouldn't you flex with the proper terminology? But to compare the Mark 18 in-game to the real-life gun, the stats are pretty faithful. Let's compare it to the AK-47 in-game. The Mark 18 is slightly more accurate than the AK-47 in Modern Warfare, and while a high-end AK might have comparable accuracy to a rat grade M4, a true Mark 18 with a free floating barrel and a knight's armament sight setup like those in the game will likely be much more accurate than a beat up child soldier battlefield pickup. The AK has a slightly higher damage rating than the Mark 18. This is probably accurate, but it's difficult to measure because of the way these guns inflict damage differently. From a purely boring-ass mathematical standpoint, the AK is deadly powerful. 
A 16-inch AK-47 will propel a 120-grain-plus round at about 2,300 feet per second, while the 10-inch Mark 18 will push a much smaller 55-grain round at about 25 to 2,600 feet per second. So from an energy standpoint, then, the AK is roughly twice as powerful as the Mark 18 at the muzzle. However, the AR-15 round is designed to fragment upon impact, basically exploding after contact with the target, causing massive permanent wound cavitation. The AK-47 round doesn't fragment and instead tumbles through the target. I'm not fully prepared to say which of these guns would cause more damage, and I'm making air quotes, so Modern Warfare gets a pass on this one. Fire rate and controllability numbers look about right, as the Mark 18 has a higher rate of fire, but it's much more controllable than the AK's patented chop-chop-chop that it's known for. Range is probably on point two, or at least close enough for government work. In real life, the Mark 18 is going to have a little bit better range in a 10-inch configuration compared to a 16-inch. AK. At 350 yards, a 223 round sent from the Mark 18 will have dropped 28 inches, which is a foot less drop than the 40 inches from the AK. My only other real issue with the in-game Mark 18 is that it has the same mobility rating as the AK. This is way, way, way off. The standard AK with wood furniture is going to be much heavier and less mobile than a Mark 18. The Mark 18 weighs about six pounds. It's gonna be made of aluminum and polymer. It uses super light aluminum magazines, has plenty of sling attachment points and a collapsible stock as short as 27 inches of overall length whenever you compress it all the way down. The standard AK, on the other hand, is about three feet long with two shitty loops for surplus rifle sling made out of recycled shoelaces in a slave labor camp. You're going to be lugging around fat, heavy steel banana mags made in a despotic communist country with names ending in Stan or Heine. My Zostava AK weighs 8.8 .8 pounds with plastic furniture, so this gun's going to be 50% heavier than the Mark 18. The Mark 18 should have a mobility rating that's about the same or maybe even better than the MP5. The Mark 18 is more or less the effect official rifle of tier one operators from the U.S. stationed all across the world, and that's why it's number three. Moving on to the HK MP7. Oh my god, this gun is awesome. That was the most incredible experience of my life. I've had several opportunities to shoot this gun in real life, which is fortunate because not only is this gun an absolute scream to shoot, but it's made out of aluminum, steel, and unobtainium. There's no civilian version of this gun made, which is unfortunate because H&K would make a bundle if they released it to the civilian market. Both the gun and ammo are expensive, so it's a rare treat to shoot this gun once, much less several times, as I've been blessed to do. I was once even so lucky to shoot the MP7 next to potential, I guess, customers at a U.S. Air Force base while HK engineers looked on approvingly. The detail-oriented Germans took measurements of cyclical rates of the guns in suppressed and unsuppressed full-auto format and measured the ejection patterns of these guns with and without a silencer in place. I get to spend one glorious morning watching a bunch of Europeans beat this gun like a rented mule in the middle of a dusty American desert, and it never skipped a beat. The MP7 is a submachine gun chambered in 46 by 30 millimeter. This is a very, very, very teensy tiny round in the 30 to 40 grain range that almost reaches 2,500 feet per second from the tiny MP7. Comparatively, the MP7's older brother, the MP5, launches a much larger 115 to 147 grain round, but at about 1,000 feet per second slower than the MP7. So while the MP5 absolutely dunks on the MP7 in terms of raw energy at the moment, muzzle, the MP7 isn't made for brute force. It's about longer range, and more importantly, slicing through body armor like it's not even there. Now, I'd continue to tell you a little bit more about the MP7, but why listen to me when you can get the scoop straight from an HK company rep? This excerpt is from our mini documentary on the MP7. Check it out. The one thing that I do like about this weapon system is it's completely concealable, so if you need to use this for a protection detail, you can holster it under your arm, under a coat, and no one would ever know that you have it. You have your pistol sights, which come with this weapon system for short distance. The MP stands for machine pistol, so this weapon system can be deployed as a pistol. Should you decide to use it at a long range situation, you would merely flip up your front sight, flip up your rear sight, extend your buttstock completely out. Now you can deploy this as a long range weapon system. This weapon system was designed to be able to hit a target at 300 meters 
and is ex accessible and will go through Soviet body armor at 200 meters. So I think the MP7 in-game stats are some of the most f***ed of the entire game, at least when compared to the MP5. It's almost like the designers of the game just thought, hey, MP7, this is kind of cool, but we have no clue what the real world specs are in this mysterious gun, so we're just going to wait them for the game. Let's talk about numbers from an article about the MP7 from one of TFB's most educated writers and firearms engineers, Nathaniel Fitch. While the MP5 is a little more powerful than the MP7 in the game, in real life the MP5 generates about 40% more muzzle energy than the MP7's teensy tiny rounds. That's 700 foot-pounds for the MP5 and 500 foot-pounds of energy for the MP7 at the muzzle. As far as damage goes, it's harder to say because 4.6 millimeter used by the MP7 comes in both steel armor penetrator variants and fragmenting variants meant to generate larger wound cavities. The MP5 has greater range than the MP7 in the game, but this must be a personal insult to Mr. Heckler and Coke himself because the MP7 was designed to specifically have a greater range than 9mm and this stat is way, 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 way off. At 200 meters, the 9mm from the MP5 has dropped off 40 inches while the MP7 doesn't hit a 40 inch drop until 300 meters. That's a huge huge difference. So this stat is about as wrong as it gets in the game. Video game rate of fire is about right for the MP7 because it has a rate of fire of 950 rounds per minute to the MP5's 800 rounds per minute. Although the MP7 has a searing rate of fire of nearly 1,000 rounds per minute, the 4.6 millimeter round generates so little recoil that shooting the MP7 is like using a garden hose spray nozzle of steel shitstorm death. You just kind of point at what you want to hit, pull the trigger, and then turn on the stream. But the MP5 and the MP7 are very controllable, so there's no reason for the stats to be so far askew here. Mobility is also off quite a bit. I would call the MP7 one of the most mobile guns ever made. It's ultra lightweight, ultra compact. It's only 4 pounds and as small as 18 inches with the stock collapsed. It's meant to be concealed under a jacket. The steel MP5, on the other hand, is indeed quite mobile, but it weighs almost twice as much as the MP7 and has almost twice as long an overall length. In game, these guns have the same mobility rating, while the MP7 should have one of the highest mobility ratings in the game. Who boy, so I had a very, very hard time deciding what the best gun in the game is in real life. So it's with equal parts worry and enthusiasm that I proclaim it to be the M13, which gun guys know is the SIG MCX Virtus. While Virtus sounds like the name of a Greek philosopher's eunuch intern, Virtus is Latin for macho, more or less. The name's fitting because the MCX is one tough-ass rifle. This is a controversial number one because the MCX is the newest and least tested gun in real life. Compared to designs from the 1960s like the MP5 and the M4, which have proven their worth time and time again over half a century, the MCX came about in just 2015. But it's for that exact reason why the MCX is number one on this list. Modernity. Just like the Styrog in 1977, just like the M16 in 1964, the MCX is a state-of-the-art gun. Cutting edge. SIG basically took all of the great designs of the past and merged them into one super gun. The MCX shares many design cues with the M4, and you can even install a conversion kit onto a standard M4 lower that will allow it to accept MCX uppers. There's even parts compatibility between the guns like triggers, grips, magazines, and small receiver components. Like the AR platform, the MCX is most commonly found in 223 or 556 millimeter, but it can be easily converted to accept the enemy's 76239. AK ammo, or more excitingly, 300 blackout, which we're going to talk about more in just a second. But that's where the similarities with the AR-15 end. After that, the MCX has specifically addressed weaknesses with the M4 as a platform to make a more advanced gun. The version I'm shooting in a lot of this B-roll is the SIG MCX Rattler, which is a PDW that has been purchased by the U.S. Special Operations Command for use by super mean dudes in super secret scenarios. It's called the Rattler because it'll rattle your teeth out of your mouth if you shoot it in close quarters without a silencer. The Rattler's 
a five inch variant of the nine inch variant 300 blackout MCX Virtus, AKA the M13 from the game. So the MCX is a little bit of a hybrid of the AR and the AK, kind of like the werewolf vampire hybrid from Underworld, except it's awesome and not a disappointing metallic silver goth hobo. It uses a piston operating system like the AK, except as with the Styrog, the MCX uses a short stroke piston operating system, giving it good accuracy while maintaining that AK like reliability. In fact, the MCX is scary reliable, as seen in this testing video from SIG. And even though the MCX uses a piston and operating rod setup, gun industry professionals have managed to squeeze out one inch groups at 100 yards with match ammo in the SIG MCX. Unlike the M4, the MCX has dual recoil springs which are contained inside of the receiver. The recoil spring for the AR-15 is in the buffer tube, which is inside of the stock more or less. That means that with the standard M4, you don't have the option for a folding stock. On the contrary, with the SIG MCX, you have a multitude of options that all install easily because of a small piece of vertical Picatinny rail at the rear of the receiver. That means the gun's more compact and mobile than the M4 because you can make it smaller for carrier transport with either a collapsing stock that collapses all the way down or with a folding stock that'll fold alongside the receiver and still allow you to fire while the stock is folded. The MCX also has hardened steel wear components inside of the receiver, like the feed ramps, the case deflector, and the charging handle latch point. That means the MCX can go 20,000 rounds without replacement parts. FYI, that's about $7,000 worth of ammo. And when it's time for a replacement, you don't need to ditch the MCX receiver like you would with other guns. All you have to do is replace those worn out parts for a few bucks and you're good for another 20,000 rounds. Like an oil change, except your dad isn't standing over you and telling you what a disappointment you are. The controls are just better on the MCX also. It's an ambidextrous gun unlike the M4, the AK-47, and the ergonomics are outstanding, with a similar manual of arms to the already ergonomically solid M4. So that means that a soldier who already uses the M4 can pick up the MCX and run with it without additional training. Another benefit of the MCX is the ability to change calibers without changing receivers. And an option in real life and in the game is to shift to 300 blackout from 5.56. 300 blackout may be one of the best calibers out there. Essentially, it uses a 223 caliber casing with very efficient 308 bullets. So that means you don't have to change the MCX's internals if you want to use 300 blackout. You just need a barrel swap, which takes no time at all at the MCX, unlike the M4 or the AK, which require gunsmithing to change the barrels. The 300 blackout is great because of its reliability across a wide range of bullet weights. You can use light 300 blackout rounds in the 110 to 125 grain range that'll go supersonic and perform almost exactly the same as the AK-47. Or you can use heavier rounds upwards of 220 grains that will travel just below the speed of sound, about 1100 feet per second, meaning that they don't make a sonic crack when they exit the muzzle. Therefore, subsonic rounds are ideal for suppressing and they're especially efficient out of short barrels. Oh, man. A 9 inch 300 blackout MCX will generate as much muzzle energy as the 14 and a half inch 556 M4. The standard MCX in Modern Warfare is presumably a 223, but the stats are actually really close in real life to the 300 blackout. It has about the same range and power as the AK-47 in game, which is spot on if you're using Supersonic 300. Supersonic 300 blackout out of the MCX is going to perform almost identically to a real life AK. The MCX is more accurate than the AK-47 in the game, but in my opinion, not enough, because top-end AKs can barely break 2-inch groups at 100 yards, while the MCX can shoot tighter than 1 inch with the right ammo. I keep getting irrationally pissed off that the 9-pound fixed stock asshole Somali Pirate AK has the same mobility rating as the lighter and more compact Mark 18 and the MCX. The Mark 18 and the MCX should have a similar rating above the AK for mobility. The MCX is more controllable in game than the AK, which is true in real life. I think the MCX MCX in real life is less controllable than the Mark 18, but they have similar ratings in game. That's not a huge oversight though. But speaking of huge oversight, the 300 black upgrade in the game looks like a programmer tried to understand the Wikipedia article about the caliber and just guessed. The 300 blackout upgrade is for subsonic ammo and it even says that there's lower velocity in the description, but it gives you greater range, which is nonsense. 
Supersonic 300 Blackout has a shorter range than 5.56mm, but Subsonic has even shorter range than the lighter, faster Supersonic 300s. The increase in damage is probably not big enough of an increase. The slight decrease in accuracy is probably fair, as 300 Blackout tends to be slightly less accurate than 223. Even with a little backwards logic, statistically speaking, the 300 Blackout MCX is one of the more faithful replications of its real-life counterpart in the game, and the real-life MCX is one of the best modern service rifles out today. So there's the top five real guns of Modern Warfare 2019. I'm going to put a little survey down in the comments and if this video does well i might do a video on the five worst real life guns of modern warfare if there's a gun that you want to see covered on a future video about modern warfare 2019 just leave it in the survey i'm going to export the results and look everything over as usual i want to say thanks to our sponsors blue alpha gear and ventura munitions the best sponsors in the world but most of all thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed this video, please help us out and support us at either subscribestar.com slash TFBTV or patreon.com slash TFBTV. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next week.